we are obviously not in Florida anymore. There is snow on the ground. Where are we at, Vic? Tillamook, Oregon. We are about to walk down this trail and I guess get to the river. We haven't I've been down there yet, but we're going out on this raft right here. We are here with the guys from Addicted Fishing and we got Little, come here, Little. Ah. <laughs> are you ready to go fishing? Yes. He's gonna catch a big old steelhead. Aren't you? You're one fishy dog. So, I'm very excited. It snowed last night, it snowed yesterday. It's pretty cold, but we are having fun. Holy, absolutely beautiful. Wow. So now what they're doing is they are literally using these logs to push the rafts down into the water off of this little like hill we got going on here. Nine point five, <laughs> nine point six, nine point five, ten, nine point five. What an absolutely scenic place. I was not really expecting this. We went on the river yesterday and this one is completely different. The water is crystal clear. It is absolutely beautiful. But we got the boats in the water. Now let's go fishing. So what we're gonna do is we're, up, we're gonna walk you that bank and we're gonna have you cast into that where that water's kind of coming up a little bit. Right. And hoping that it just goes right down the middle of the pipe, right here off the rock. And they could if they're real comfortable, they'll lay real back in these shallow tailouts here, but you're gonna just kind of cruise up right there, throw it in the water, dump the line like you said, make sure that bobber's straight up and down, that bobber stop settles. If it goes under, start reeling. You wanna let that stuff get down and just naturally drift. So when it's going, if you're pulling on it and you're moving it and you're kind of holding it and it takes any of that like natural drift out of it, see how don't want it. They want it just as naturally as they go down. So you'll see us, Throwing a lot of slack in the lines and stuff like that, but you always want to be prepared because that bobber sinks or starts chugging under, you need to get on it with haste. They won't give you, they won't give you a second shot and they won't give you a lot of time either. So, so here you go. Okay. Get up in there. Guys, thanks for coming. We're out of here. We're leaving. Do another one. Try to get one more in there as close as you can. What? So you're that sure that there's fish in there? I know there's one. They lay. Okay. 100 steelhead will swim by here and 100 steelhead will pull into that spot okay. at some point in time. So if they're here, they're, you can paint X's on the water as you go down the river and they're like, yep, they're right here, they're right here. So you just, and sometimes they can be a little camera shot. That'll work out good. Yep. The slack's gonna push you in there. Bobber straight up and down. Porky's on top. Shit, she's got Ooh. it. You know, she fishes. Yeah. You're getting some good compliments there, girl. Well, I mean, there's definitely a learning curve to it. Look, my leader is as long as my rod is. I'm using a 10 foot leader, which, you know, I've never casted a 10 foot leader. People get annoyed when we have like a three foot leader. <laughs> So there's definitely a learning curve to it and trying to figure out the way the water is moving so you can cast in the right direction to get your bait to where you want it to go, but I'm excited. Beautiful. Yep, just pull it off there a little, a little bit more. And there's so much current and movement underwater that like one cast, your, your bait will be pushed all the way to the wall. The next cast will be pushed on the inside. So you're never going to make the same cast. Even if you make 50 casts, they're all going to go on a different lane. Yeah. So it's just you know constant gosh you're fishing that just absolutely perfectly i'm really excited to see my first fish of the day even if i'm not the first one to catch it still absolutely epic place i've never done anything like this before fishing on a river like this this amazing and just scenic as can be fish on <laughs> it's a little guy 
He's cute though. He's got Little, are you going to get him for us? Little skinny thing. See that adipose fin there? Oh, that's a wild one. That's a wild one. See, see that right there? Yep. Yeah, so we're not going to do much with her. I'm just going to take that bead. She's already came up, done her thing. See how skinny she is there? She's already dug her, dug her nest and yeah, pretty. See ya. Nice job, dude. you know it's hailing again <laughs> it it's has like, hailed it has gone from rain hail snow to it being sunny about three or four times today it's absolutely crazy it gets hot I go to put my sunglasses on take my jacket off and immediately it looks like it's gonna start raining again then it hails then the Sun comes out <laughs> it's crazy Oh, you got bit. She's got no bait. Hey, make sure there's a hook on that. Somebody make sure there's a hook on it. Poor Berkey's had the worst luck today. Perfect cast. And the way you got to kind of have some skill level when you do this type of fishing because you got to make sure your line is tight and enough slack at the same time. She's casting right into that tree, not getting it every single time. She's doing amazing, but she's just having bad luck. These fish are not committing. Come on, Brooke. There he is. Get him, get him. He's swimming away. Hey, running with him. Ah, ah. oh, what happened there? Brooke, Brooke, Brooke. Come on, babe. Her bait's all over nine. Little, the only thing I would say is literally set the hook like it's a bass. Yeah. Just rip it, Jamie. You're not going to break that rod. <laughs> Look at that perfect cast every time. Come on, Brooke. I don't even need to watch my hopper. If you guys couldn't hear that, Brooke just said, I don't even need to watch my bobber. Everyone else just tells me when to set the hook. Yes, bro! Probably gonna freak out again here in a second. Just keep your tip in the water and keep breathing and like keeping your rod like that and push you that way. Stop it. Just like that. I'm gonna come time to net him. I'm gonna lift up real fast and then to me. Okay? Just keep it down and push your rod forward and reel. Push your rod forward and reel. Just keep it in the water. Keep the tip down and then push your rod up river. Keep pushing. There you go. Okay, reel down. Keep your tip in the water though. So real smooth and even, just like that. Just stay like that. Keep reeling. Okay, keep oh, pushing. Push, push, push. <laughs> Reel down. Just keep him up. He's got to come up a little bit more for you. Okay, keep your rod pushed down and up river. Really nice keep pushing day. it up river. Yes, just like that. Stay right there. Keep pushing. Keep your tip down the water. <laughs> oh, God, it's a tanker. It's a tanker. It's a tanker. It's a real good one. Push your rod up river. Stay right there. Stay right there. Start reeling, start reeling. Start reeling, and you just gotta keep pushing the rod that way. I'm gonna tighten you up just a little bit, right there. 
okay? So you're just kind of tricking that fish and getting him above us. And then when you, when you feel him, you're just going to lift straight up. you got to get real tall and get your hands up. Okay, push forward. Okay, push. Keep your tip down low. Push, push, push. Okay, you ready? Now, now, lift hard. Lift, 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 lift. Lift, 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 lift. Lift. Okay, back out and around. Back out and around. Can you, you move that, Ron? Okay. okay, ready? Yeah. Now, do it now. Do it now. Oh, fuck. Back out and around. Back out and around. Back out and around. Oh, God, Nick, you want the net? Oh, God. We should ride down low. Too far away. There you go. Push him back up. We almost had him. Reel down. Push, push, push. Push, push, push. Push. Okay, ready? Uh -huh. Oh, God, now. Now, now, now. Now. Oh, my God. Back out and around. Back out and around. Should she back come up around. here? Back out and around. Put your foot in the water. Push him back this way. With your rod I think tip. she needs to come up your here. Rod We're going to try one more time. Reel down. Push. Your rod forward up river. And now get real tall. Ready? Go. Now. Get it, Dave. Got it. Got him. Got him. Got him. Woo, baby. It only took me hundreds of casts. Coming home, baby. Is what I'm talking about, perseverance. Look at how fast this thing is. That is a tiny tank. That's a stop, bro. It's so what kind is this? Do, 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 do. Is this a hatchery fish? Dance Dance yeah. Revolution, baby. Maybe keep this one. We can keep it. Where the hell is it? There. Oh, there it is. Oh, look at that addicted hook. Look at that. See how that hooks? Not pinned. Just pinned. Right it. around the bone, ne never coming off. You could have fought never. that for two I'm hours. Kidding. Yeah, so for hours. It. Never, ever, I ever coming off. <laughs> That's the steel head shakes. Steel head shakes. Oh my god. Literally. It like it's really in there. Jesus. Oh my there god. Go. Okay. Wow. Here, Good I'm job, moving. Brooke. The fish of a thousand casts right well, there. Well, it's about doing it and correct, doing it correct over and over. And there was really nothing she did wrong on those first few bites. Maybe that one you had a little bit of line out there. Like, Good job, Brooke. Thank you. Ugh, did it! That was some bites. She fished way too good to not kill one. Dude, I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen like good of a rod like that. That fast. Alright guys, well, I'm pretty sure I casted a few hundred times today, but I didn't give up and these guys were persistent on helping me cast in the right places to really get me on my First steelhead. It's an absolutely beautiful fish. So excited. It's much above average for this year. That's a beautiful that's fish. All right, guys, so this is actually a hatchery fish. It's actually a broodstock fish, and we have, there's wild fish in here and there's broodstock fish. And if you can see right here, this little fin is clipped and it's got a little miss clip, is what they call that tiny little growth. It grows back a little bit sometimes. But if they're missing this fin, it was raised by our hatchery. So what we do is we catch the wild fish and we have a tank, but we have so many people today we couldn't bring it. But we'll take those wild fish, we'll put them in the tanks, and then the hatchery will come down and take those wild fish and spawn them and then release them back into the river. So it's a live spawn. They actually get to come back to the river, go back out to the ocean. And then they take those babies from the wild fish and make our hatchery fish with them. So really it's like a, it's a wild genetic fish, it has all the genes of a wild fish, but it's just raised in the hatchery. And this, this missing fin right here is what allows us to be able to retain that fish. So um, absolutely beautiful fish. I mean, that's a specimen for, for this time of year. So not bad for your first one. Thank you so much. Might as well quit now. <laughs> <laughs> quit while you're ahead. After I don't know how many casts and how many, I mean, I'm not kidding. She can cast and she's putting it in the right spots. And we got into this hole and got a few opportunities. She, I think he lost two and missed a couple. And finally we got that one to stick in the middle of the hole. And this is what she came out with. Just an absolute perfect specimen. Nice buck, amazing fish to eat. Um, great job. Thank you. You excited? I'm very excited. And it was crazy because I was surprised, honestly, that they had me casting in the same spot so many times after not seeing anything happen. And then finally, I did lose one. So then I was like, okay, I get it. There are fish here. Yep. Sometimes <laughs> and then just, finally got yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, it's a great fish too. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Heck yeah, proud of you. That was pretty cool. I'll tell you what, these guys are pretty cool. It's not often that you get to go fishing with people who really are 
you know, wanting to get you on special fish and really care about your experience. So, thank oh, you. Yes, everyone. absolutely. Well, that's why we do it, right there. God, what a fish, too. She, Brooke had just asked what this mark is from, and you can see these like claw marks right here. And it's actually from sea lions. We have a real bad issue with sea lions tearing up our fish. And um, you'll see like, that's probably either claws or teeth in here. And, and some years, man, it's literally, you'll see almost every fish has some sort of sea lion mark in it. Um, and, and that's how resilient these fish are, man. They get, we catch them sometimes with like half their face and anything. I mean, all kinds of stuff. The tail's missing, big old line. Oh, cans on. Cans on. Live action. Live action. So how far are we from the ocean here? We're about, um, you know, by river miles, we're probably 12 miles from the ocean. I would say actually river miles, road miles, probably nine, nine, ten, in there. Oh, what's that? That's a fish. No. Oh, goodness. What's this? Brooks on. That's a fish. I think Brooks the other on. one was too. I saw a flash. That's a skate, even tight line, even tight line. Keep your rod up. I got the load. Well, it only took me hundreds of casts to catch my first one, okay. and now literally my ready? first cast after having okay, caught that first one, I'm hooked you, up again. Go for it right now, up and over, right now. Do it again, push down. This one's really bright. Yep, push your rod up river, keep reeling. Push it up river, not towards it. There you go. Okay, now real, right now, real tall, real tall, real tall. Oh, God. Whoa. I think back to you again. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Zoom again. Push, tip in the water. Real, real, real. Real, real, real. Real, real, real. Okay, push up river. He's going to be below us, Bill. Okay, now, big, big lift high. Got it. Oh. <laughs> Oh, he was in, in and, and out. out. In and out. In and out. Get it now. Get ready. In and out. Do it again now. Oh my gosh, this fish is yeah. smart. Woo! Got it. Got it. Look how pretty this one is. We got a little bit of color. There you go. It's a hatchery fish. Just looked like she was just starting to. Just she's just dropping her eggs out there, so. Probably let that one go, maybe, huh? Yeah, that's fine. Cool, all right. Here we go, great, great, great. we'll shoot her in. Woo, there she goes. Good job, babe. All right, good job. Let's see if we can get another one. So, why do we let those ones go? Well, it's just that one was, it's not gonna cut great, like, okay, but it's 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 out there spawning right now, so we'll just, yeah, let it let it do its thing, and, and um, yeah, we'll find another one that's a little bit better. There you we don't go. wanna tag out either, he's already got one dead, so. You only have two and then you gotta quit fishing. Well, that was pretty crazy there for a while. That spot where I caught my first one, the boys ended up catching a couple more and hooking a bunch. So, you know, sometimes you gotta stay at the same spot casting a bunch of times before you actually get a fish to bite. Um, but then we just moved up my second, my first cast after I had just caught in that one. I just caught another one, so pretty awesome. Can you make it three for three? I don't know about that. <laughs> That's asking too much. All right guys, I wanna give a quick thank you and shout out to High C, which is the waders Victor and I are wearing. And I also have a pair of insulated boots that I brought on this trip. We have been getting in and out of the boat, whether we're fishing or holding fish in the water so that we can release them. Waders were a must on this trip, so I'm very glad. And these have been keeping me so warm. As you guys have seen, we've had some crazy weather, whether it is raining, snowing, hailing. These waders have been keeping us warm, so I'm very happy to have had these on this trip. If you guys have been watching my videos for a while, you know I've gone through a few pairs of waders during duck hunting season, so that's why I got the camo one, so I can wear this during duck hunting season as well. But High Seas hooking you guys up with a coupon code. You guys can save 20% on anything on their website, so make sure you guys check that out. I'll have a link in the description. One of my favorite parts about these waders is there's a secret little pocket in here where I can keep my phone because let me tell you, you don't know how many times that I've tried to put things in my waders and they just fall right down, GoPro batteries down at your feet and all that kind of stuff. So 
a nice little pocket in there to keep it nice and dry. Hi-C has a full line of durable, lightweight, and rigorously tested gear that is suitable for a wide range of outdoor activities such as hunting, fishing, farming, field work, and more. So if you guys are in the market for a new pair of waders or boots or anything like that, make sure you check them out. I'll have a link in the description. And let's get back to fishing. This is how we fish in, in the Northwest. It's nice and hot. It's all for look. Well, good morning. It is day two. We're about to head out on the river. We're starting where we stopped yesterday, so we get the other half. And every sing it snowed again last night, so everything is kind of frozen, so you literally just dip the rods in the water to get the ice off of them. So here we go, day two. Wish us luck. I looked at the level this morning and it was exactly the same. Did it stay the same? You hit Little or you hit Jordan? No, I hit Jordan right in the head. There you go. Oh, he's still better. It. He's still better. Hundred dollars. You owe me a hundred dollars. <laughs> oh, stick your, stick your, stick your tip in the water. I just hooked my first fish of the morning. It's definitely a lot colder this morning. I can barely feel my fingertips, <laughs> but. We got a fish on. Good job. Thank you. What do we got? What do we got, bro? Oh, it's nice. Jump for us. Brooke, that's a really nice one. Okay, push him that way. Now lift. So this is a downriver fish, so we're gonna just take care of this one quickly. We want it. Yep. Good job, babe. Thank you. Okay, so that fish has spawned out. So basically, this fish is already, I'll show you here. Let me get this hook out of it. This is another hatchery fish. So this fish would actually be legal to take home. Um, but as you can see, it's real skinny and kind of discolored. The fins are real purple. This fish has already come into the river and spawned. Um, and it's on its way actually back out to the ocean. So we call them a downriver fish. It's kind of like a downer, downriver fish. Um, and basically these fish have already come in. Oh, there it goes. And they've already come in, spawn, and they're on their way back up to the ocean to do their thing again. Then they'll come back again. So as long as they avoid all the predators. And that's the other thing about our program is a lot of times I actually caught one the other day that had been tagged a previous year. So we had caught that fish, put it in the tank, spawned it, released it, went back out to the ocean, came back, and I caught it again with a tag from the previous year in it. So it's a really cool program. I mean, these fish go back out, come back in, and we'll catch them again. Well, Nick, hopefully next year, like when that fish comes back, the meat will be a better quality fish to keep. And so by putting some of those fish back, they're probably not as ideal quality. Like it'll be right. much better table fare if some lucky angler were to get it next year. And it'll be bigger. Yeah. And it'll be bigger. It'll be bigger. bigger <laughs> better eating. Yeah. This fish's goal, when it comes out of that ocean and into this river, its number one goal is to spawn. So that's all they focus on. They put all their energy into their eggs, and so their meat will kind of turn like a pale color and deteriorate a little bit, get softer, because all their energy goes to, to getting those eggs out of their body and getting onto the spawning beds. And then it goes back out, <clears throat> and actually that's why they're so aggressive, those downers, they bite everything. It's because they're, they actually want to feed again. It's time to feed. They're getting back into like, all right, I got to rebuild my body to go do this process again. So it's, it's a, just an absolute, I mean, it's really cool to think that they go, they're born in this river, they go all the way out to the ocean, they swim around for three, four years, and then they find their exact river they were born in and return to it. I mean, it's unbelievable. This is actually good snow. It's starting to actually stick on the ground a little and they're nice big pieces of snow. Big
it's a brand new one. They might have just picked them up. It's a brand new one. Rod, oh, real no, low, it's bro. going, real low, dude. Bro. In that water. Bury your rod. It's leaving it. We're going. Rod tip up a little, bro. There you go. Can I go six for six? So this is going to be super exciting, huh? We never had to chase one like this. No, it's starting to go down like this yeah, little... Easy, easy. Okay. It's in the shallow area right here in the current, so now we got to go after it. I got a girl. Down on the marlin. anyway weren't you yeah that was a really that was a that was just a fun fight that was an experience right no, that there. was really cool doing donuts down the river it was either going to be the tree or the trolling motor that right there. <laughs> well we've caught probably over a dozen by now no? over a dozen at today. least yeah it's been a good day it's been an amazing day again crazy weather we've had heavy even heavy snow today but we're having fun. Now the sun's out. Can you believe it? <laughs> it's been nice and sunny for about 30 minutes. And look at the sky behind us now. We'll see how long this lasts. Jesus. Oh, oh, a few of these in your day, I'm sure. Oh. Maybe from here to Florida, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, with my lodge in Alaska and stuff too, like, yeah, a lot of filet. So would you say these are, of any this, fish, are they the most similar to salmon in terms of flavor? Yeah, yeah, just yeah, maybe even like closer to like a coho, you know, four to five species, but they're just, yeah, they're just mild. Oh yeah, look at that. Boy, that cut great. Super nice meat. Boy, those cut nice. Super nice. I mean, if you didn't tell me what this was, I would have thought it was a salmon based on the color. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, and these are, I mean, this one cut. This one, be a little pale. This one cut real good. So like when they, a lot of times those sea lions grab them, they'll break their backs and their, their spines down. Yeah, that's one had some scars on it. Right? But as what'll happen is it'll break their backs and like up in here. See how it's all notched mm -hmm. up right there? It's from the sea lion grabbing them and breaks their like, and then they get scar tissue built up on there. Yeah, this one's uh much brighter. Yeah, this one. The smaller one and then the yeah, much bigger one. You'll is be real awesome. surprised. I bet you this thing eats and tastes just as good. Maybe even better. Like if you the look in here, one? you see all the fat layer in them yeah. still. You still got a lot of fat in, in the in the meat and stuff. I mean, they're both gonna be delicious. Like. Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. Obviously we are not in Oregon anymore. We are back home here in Florida and we got a fish that has never been in this kitchen before. We have our beautiful steelhead that we brought home. We vacuum sealed it, froze it, brought it on the plane with us, and here it is in Florida. We actually have not ate any of this yet. We did eat some salmon the first day when we were in Oregon. Jordan cooked it, and it was absolutely delicious. So I'm actually going to do that exact same recipe that he did, 
but we cooked it on the grill outside so it was a little more epic because I'm gonna just bake mine in the oven inside. But I wanna give a huge shout out and thank you to Addicted Fishing for inviting Victor and I on this trip. If you guys don't know, they have a YouTube channel and they're going to make a whole video from the entire weekend from this trip where I made one video, Victor made three, but they're going to put the entire weekend into one really big epic video. So make sure you guys check that out. I will have a link to their channel down below, but you guys can just type in Addicted Fishing on YouTube. And then Jordan started his own channel, which is Stay Fishy Adventures. Um, so make sure you guys check out both those channels. They're awesome guys. They do a lot of great content, so check them out. Now, let's get to doing our recipe. So, like I said, Jordan did this when we were there, and he did mayonnaise and pesto. And that's what we're doing tonight. So, we got some Duke's mayo, because you can't go wrong with some Duke's mayo. We have some pesto. And I may or may not have already ate some of this, and it was really delicious. <laughs> okay, so there's that. I think that is enough volume, but before I put on the mayo pesto combo, we're gonna hit these with some salt and pepper. Unfortunately, one bad thing happened on this trip. Everything went amazing, but we had one sad thing happen, which was we lost one of our GoPros, which was the only GoPro that we used to film the entire trip on. Not 100% sure, but we're 99% sure that we left it at the boat ramp cleaning station in Depot Bay. We went um, offshore fishing that day. I didn't make a video, but I'm pretty sure we left the GoPro there. So we lost a ton of footage from fishing on the river. In the video, you heard me talk a lot about the crazy weather, but unfortunately you didn't get to really see any of that part because that was all on the GoPro. Anytime that it was raining, hailing, snowing, we didn't take out the good camera, we filmed on the GoPro, so we filmed all of those crazy weather moments. I'm not lying when I tell you that it snowed, rained, hailed, and it would go to sunshine for like five minutes and then go back to basically raining all day, but it probably did that like five times a day. It was the craziest thing ever, and unfortunately you're not really gonna get that whole experience because that stuff was on the GoPro, but I'm telling you, it was the craziest thing I've ever been in. It was the coldest weather I've ever been in. I could barely feel my fingertips basically all day long, even though we had um, those hot hand hand warmers, but it was an epic experience and I wouldn't have changed anything. It was a ton of fun. But unfortunately, lost that GoPro, so you're not gonna get to see all those crazy moments that were filmed on the GoPro. So now I'm just spreading the mayo and pesto on. Mayo is pretty fatty, so I'm not gonna worry about trying to put any oil on these or anything beforehand. Skin is still on these. And Victor actually pulled all of the bones out with a pair of tweezers. So they don't have the bones in them. We do got the skin on there though. So I do have my whole family coming over for dinner tonight and not all of them are the biggest salmon lovers and obviously I know this is not salmon, but that's the most comparable fish. You know, I can't compare this to like our saltwater fish. It's a completely different species, completely different taste. So I am really excited to see what they think about this fish. I have really high hopes. I think that it's gonna be really delicious, especially because it's so fresh. I think they're all gonna love it. All right, so we're about to put the steelhead in the oven at 375. For side dishes, we got some orzo pasta going on, and I'm gonna blanch some green beans. But first thing, get the fish in the oven. So I got some orzo pasta with some onions and garlic. And right now I'm just browning the pasta a little bit and then we're gonna add the water. All right, so we did do a broil at the last second on these. So they are very hot. 
Oof, but they look amazing. It's not salmon, it's steelhead. It's a rainbow trout that goes to the ocean. So it is now not a rainbow trout anymore, it's now a steelhead. Yep. Like no one calls it a rainbow trout, if you call it a steelhead. And they do just like salmon do, they go back to the same river where they were born to spawn. But they don't die like a salmon does. A salmon dies when it spawns, they spawn, leave the river to go back to the ocean, and they just keep doing it. Okay, everybody. Come one, come all to the Steelhead Show. It's, um, it's really good. Wow, it's, really good. it's quite a treat, mm -hmm. that's for sure. This is quite a treat. All the way from Oregon. Oregon. Steelhead? All the way from Oregon. <laughs> Who here thinks it's similar to salmon? It looks like it. You getting oh. salmon vibes? No. Just the look. Honestly, I don't like salmon, so this is really good. This isn't going to be my first ever steelhead bite, and ever since we went on this trip, all I've been thinking about is what is this fish going to taste like? It looks so much different than anything we have in Florida. It looks the most similar to salmon, and look at this. Ooh, baby, big old flake. Still got that pink, pinkish reddish color, comes right off the skin. If the skin, you don't like it, don't eat it. It's not like salmon. Huh? No, it's not like salmon at all. It's not like it, is it? It's <laughs> damn good is what it is. Yeah. It's got so much flavor. It does, it's got a ton of flavor. Yeah, when you talk about all these guys in the Northwest and they talk about all the fat, and the life, the life cycle of the steelhead and going out of the river and in the river. You guys saw in Brooke's video how they were explaining how you know certain fish we released because they deteriorated. These fish are like peak fattiness. This is like the ribeye, I would say, of fish right here. This is really good. Okay, so first time having steelhead, I really wanted to compare it to salmon. I don't think it really tasted like salmon. It had its own taste, just like everyone was saying, but it was absolutely delicious. That recipe was really easy. You could do that on basically anything. So I was really happy with it. For somebody that loves salmon, I think the consistency was similar, but outside of that, there was it was not comparable. Uh, but it was delicious, super meaty, packed with flavor, just phenomenal. Well done, Brett. Thank you. I loved it too. Um, everything about it uh, tastes great. I would love to have it again, Brooke, so could you catch me another one? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to have it again too, that's for sure. This thing was tasty beyond tasty. It was, you know, I'm not going to compare it to anything. It was definitely unique and delicious. Yeah, I was a fan. Um, everything was really good. And it's not that often you get to try fish that come from somewhere as far away as these did and have it as fresh as we got it. And it was cooked perfectly. I'm, I'd, I'd like to have some steelhead again, that's for sure. Again, thank you to hi -C for sponsoring this video. Don't forget you can save 20% with code BROOK on anything on their website, from waders to boots for any occasion. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video.